Welcome into Locked on Phillies. What a big weekend for the Phils. We'll talk about their sweep of the Angels following the firing of Joe Girardi. And uh, guess who's back? That's right. It's my friend, Mr. Broom, the second time this year. We'll have an exciting time recapping it all on today's Locked on Phillies. <laughs> You are Locked On Phillies, your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is Locked On Phillies. I'm your host, Connor Thomas. I want to thank you, as always, for making Locked On Phillies your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. Now, let me take a second real quick, put Mr. Broom back in his spot because the Phillies, yes, they did sweep the Angels. Hang on. Got to lean him against the wall back here so you can see. Can you see Mr. Broom? Perfect. We'll put him right here underneath the painting. All right, right there underneath that uh, that painting so you can see him. All right, Mr. Broom's all settled in. I'm all settled in. Let's recap everything that happened this weekend. And first, I do want to tell you, well, that today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered the season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. <laughs> it's where the game starts, is Bet Online. Where this show starts, man, there's so many places I could go with today's show. And not in the bad way that we've been dealing with for the first couple months of the Philadelphia Philly season. Well, now we're looking at a team that has some energy. Let's start with exactly how sustainable this is because I talked about this on 97.5 The Fanatic on the radio this past weekend in my Saturday show and that was just after one win. Now well we know they won a game Saturday, they won the end or Sunday in dramatic fashion. We'll talk about all that. But the sustainability how sustainable is it for the Philadelphia Phillies to continue to play like this? They're playing off adrenaline right now. I think that's abundantly clear. When you fire a manager, what happens is the players feel more pressure. You get to that point where it's like, okay, well, basically our shield is gone. The guy that you're going to get rid of before you start making personnel moves is gone. The manager, they didn't give an extension this offseason. Well, he's no longer with the team. They're not going to fire the interim manager. Now it's on the players. And the trade deadline, yeah, it's more than a month away. It's probably about two months away it's still at this point. I checked the calendar. But it's it's not in the near future. But you got to start worrying about your performance if you're a player. And you certainly have to worry about the team's performance if you're Dave Dabrowski, if you're any other coaches on the team that may have issues following this season if the Phillies underperform, meaning that they might be out as well, just like Joe Girardi finds himself now. Listen, it's not a great situation when the manager gets fired this early. He's the first manager, Joe Girardi is, to be fired pre-All-Star break uh, since, I believe it was hmm, Mike Sosha. The, I, I don't know. It was Cardinals manager in 2018 before Mike Schilt. And the name escaped. No, I believe it was Mike Sosha. Anyway, it, he's the first one in a couple years. It doesn't happen all that often. But the team's energy carried them through the series with the Angels. The Angels are also uh, god-awful. They're a terrible team right now. So it's a combination of those things. It makes me worry about the sustainability of this team. That's a little bit of a longer conversation could be had on that. But I just I don't want you to think that I'm one of the people yelling from the rooftops. Oh, Phillies 2022 World Series champions now because they got rid of Joe Girardi. And I put out some tweets in jest saying, oh, Rob Thompson, greatest manager of all time. Obviously, just having some fun because it was a fun weekend. But the Phillies will have to show up against the Milwaukee Brewers, which is their next series following an off day, that uh, they'll have to take care of business up there in Milwaukee, keep this momentum going, and see if they can get a winning streak going because not every team they play is going to be on as cold of a streak as the Los Angeles Angels. The schedule does get easier. The Phillies have the fifth easiest schedule, strength to schedule the rest of the way. So they have a real chance to take advantage of a weak schedule. But – they're going to have to do it. They've got to play the games. They've got to get the hits, score the runs, make the pitches that are needed to win games. Let's jump into this weekend series and recap it, though, because, man, did they do so in this week's games. I, I can't even 
I'm almost at a loss for words for how awesome this series was and how perfect it was. First of all, uh, like there's so much to cover because I did my last podcast for you guys Friday. And then Friday night's game happened. And Saturday's game happened. And Sunday's game happened. So much to recap. Friday night, Kyle Schwarber in the Phillies' first at bat. Obviously, they had to get through the top of the first inning being the home thing. But in the Phillies' first at bat since Joe Girardi was fired, well, Kyle Schwarber just hits an absolute nuke to center field. Just a tank shot to straightaway center. Lead off home run. Gets the team all fired up. He ends up having two in that game. Two home runs, that is. Bryce Harper has two home runs in that game. Bryson Stott. We'll talk more about Bryson Stott later. Bryson Stott hits his first career home run in that game as well. And the Phillies just absolutely rout the Angels. Beat them 10-0. And just a great win. In the middle game of the series, well, it wasn't as... Uh, it wasn't as exceptional as that one, but another win against an Angels team that you can beat. And then you're going ahead and you're looking at game three where you could take advantage of well, a chance to sweep a team that still yeah, looks pretty good out there in the AL West. Is a team that still has some good players. Joey Otani, Mike Trout, definitely still on the team. Definitely played. Didn't do much against the Phillies in this one. But the Phillies had an opportunity to uh, take the series in game two, which they did, and then sweep the series in game three, which we haven't seen since the Colorado Rockies series. And that's just, frankly, it's been too long for the Philadelphia Phillies to go without a sweep. They had a chance in L.A. in between that, lost the series under there, had a chance against the Mariners, lost a game there, but did not lose it here. They took care of business against the Los Angeles Angels, winning 9-7 to in the way they did, uh, just incredibly dramatic fashion. So down 6-2 to two in the eighth inning, Bryce Harper comes up. Two outs on him. What does Bryce Harper do? What only MVPs can do. What only great players can do. Harper hits an absolute bomb to the second deck's right field. Ryan Howard territory at Citizens Bank Park. A game-tying grand slam for Bryce Harper. And the crowd goes wild. And you feel like, man, this team, they're on fire right now. And the Angels, well, the Angels just can't get out of their own way. But then... In the bottom or the bottom, in the top of the ninth, well, Corey Knable gets an opportunity and he does not do his job. A run is given up, and all of a sudden, the Phillies are in a situation where you got to score in the bottom of the ninth to extend this one. And we've seen this story before. Bryce Harper, it's a big go ahead home run in Atlanta, and then the Phillies give up two in the bottom of the ninth to lose it. Well, this one was a tying home run, but so giving up one in the top of the ninth puts the Phillies in a spot where it could happen again to Bryce Harper, whose heroics just haven't seemed to be enough so far for this team. But who comes through in the bottom of the ninth? But his Las Vegas buddy, Bryson Stott. Runner on first, runner on second. You're down one, a 3-2 count with two outs. They were one strike away from this game being over. And all of a sudden, Bryson Stott, a three-run walk-off home run to right field. Absolutely incredible. What an afternoon in South Philadelphia. What a series in South Philadelphia. And the Phillies have what I think it's easy to say. Their best, most exciting, most impactful series of the year so far. Taking care of business against the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Sending them home without a win. And the Phillies come away with three. Now, something that's important to remember, and we'll talk about this a little bit further as the season progresses, but something to look at now. I told you the Phillies have the fifth easiest schedule the rest of the way when it comes to strength of schedule remaining in Major League Baseball. Well, the Mets have the fourth easiest schedule, and they're still hugely up, double-digit games up in the division on the Philadelphia Phillies at least. The Phillies are not catching the Mets for the division. And even though 2007 is something that we can look back to, like, hey, it's happened before. This isn't 2007. That Mets team is different. The Phillies are not going to be in play for the division. I feel comfortable saying that here on June 5th, 2022. But what they're certainly in contention for is the wild card race, and that's where we're going to be looking the rest of the season. Now, can the Phillies stay hot enough to make themselves a wild card team? It's a long way to go. We still got over 100 games, but this momentum – can build into an easier part of the schedule. And everything's looking up for Rob Thompson, who wins his first three games as Phillies manager. And now the test is, let's take this show on the road and see if you can have sustained success past the adrenaline period of just having 
an organizational change that hypes everybody up. So that's what the Phillies did this weekend. Next, we're going to take a look at what the Phillies need to do in the next couple of games. We'll preview their series with the Milwaukee Brewers that starts tomorrow and get everything all squared away so that we're ready to head up to Brewtown, head up to uh, the land of beer to uh, take care of some business against the Milwaukee Brewers. Coming up next, we're going to get into everything and discuss that series and what the Phillies need to do to come out with their second straight series win. All right, I want to tell you about our friends over at Athletic Greens. AG1 is what they use to help us keep in shape. It's what I use every day. It's awesome. I start my day with AG1. Now, I do it a little bit earlier than most people. I do it at 4.30 in the morning because that's the time I get into the studio to do my morning radio show. Oh, well, not my morning radio show. The radio show that I'm a part of, the John K. show that I produce for over there on 97.5 The Fanatic. And uh, it's great because when you wake up at 4.30, you need energy. You need to be in great shape, and I don't eat well, so what I need is all of AG1's 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food, source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. All of that helps me to stay in great shape, keep my energy level up throughout a long day, and get me all set. And let me tell you the importance of a multivitamin, because I don't know that most people know this. I don't know this. Tons of people take some kind of multivitamin, so if you're not doing it, well, most people are out helping you. Like, I don't want to be out health by anybody. I'm a competitive guy. And also, you want to do what's best for your body. It's smart to do it. It's why so many people do it. It's important to choose one with high quality ingredients. Well, I don't know how to do that. Do you? Probably not. None of us eat all that well. Athletic Greens, they're the experts. They've already done it for you. It's so many included in AG1 that's easily digestible, fits into your nutrients. They've perfected it. And it's just one smoothie you take, a little drink, it tastes good, and you can just crush it in the morning. You'll be feeling good all day. Do it every day, and it's great. And I'll even cut you a deal. Well, they'll cut you a deal. I'll just tell you about the deal. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs so you can take AG1 on the go with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash MLB Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash MLB Network to take ownership of over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Okay, let's preview the Milwaukee Brewers and the Philadelphia Phillies series and tell you a little bit about what the Phils are up against as they get ready to head up to Milwaukee tomorrow. First of all, I want to tell you about our survey we're running, our listener survey for Locked On Podcast. We have an important favor to ask you. We put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make our podcast uh, even better. So your favorite Locked On Podcast, they're going to get even better from you doing this. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about Locked On Podcast, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long. And the best part, you qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards when you fill out a survey. To take our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey. And thank you, as always, for your help. So the Phillies, the Brewers, facing off the second time this year. This time it's up in Milwaukee. And, well, the Phils are not as lucky as they were last time. They will see Corbin Burns, the reigning, it hurts me to say it, the reigning NL Cy Young winner, even though I feel like it should have been Zach Wheeler. They will see Corbin Burns. But the Phillies won't see Corbin Burns until game three of this series. Game one tonight, Ranger Suarez faces off against Jason Alexander. Not that Jason Alexander. Not the one famous for playing George Costanza on Seinfeld. But he's... Definitely still the more famous Jason Alexander because this guy, well, he's only made one career start. It was against the Cubs. They lost the game. He gave up three runs and seven innings pitch. He didn't look bad in that game. But a young player, well, not even young. He's 29. So just a new player, a guy that they have to bring up because Brandon Woodruff currently on the 15-day IL, another starter for Milwaukee on the 15-day IL. Just a guy that's getting spot starts for them. And unfortunately, for Milwaukee, that's where they're at right now. Adrian Hauser gets the ball in game two against Aaron Nola. Adrian Hauser, if you're not familiar with him, he's got three five, three and five rather record so far this year, and a three five one ERA. So right on there, uh, 41 strikeouts on 1.40 WHIP. 29 year old righty, so righty. The Phillies normally hit lefties better, but. You look at it, let's see what he's done against Philly. He's only seen him one time. He went six innings, gave up five hits, three runs. Uh, he's better at home 
He's got a 195 ERA at home, but still, this is a guy that the Phillies should be able to take advantage of as well, especially with Aaron Nola on the mound. So far, you're doing the math. Well, the Phillies have the edge in the game one pitching matchup with Ranger Suarez against George Costanza. I mean, Jason Alexander. <laughs> the Phillies have the advantage in game two matchup with Aaron Nola pitching against Adrian Hauser. Well, Game three is Zach F1 against Corbin Burns. And you can tell where the uh, advantage goes on that one. Burns not having as great of a year as he had last year when he took home the NL Cy Young Award, but still a long way to go. So far, he's 3-3 three and three record on the year with a 2-5 ERA. That's 15 in 84 Ks, second in the league, and an 0-9-2 whip good for seven. So it's not like he's dropped off significantly. He's just not quite as dominant as he was last year, but plenty of time for him to stretch out and get better as the weather warms up. The Phillies are going to have to deal with that. Here's the saving grace of all of these matchups. The Milwaukee Brewers are not hitting the ball well at all. Their offense is quiet currently. Listen to some of these numbers. I'm going to go through their baseball reference page, tell you some of the stuff that's going on. Rowdy Tellez is probably their best hitter so far. He's got 10 homers on the year, 36 RBIs. He's only batting 249. Colton Wong. Batting 229 out of the second base spot. William Adamas on the 10 day IL. He should come back at some point in this series, I'm hearing. He's only batting 208. Hunter Redfro, who's also coming off the injured list. Well, he's batting 266, but a couple of days off. We'll see what he is. Lorenzo Kane batting 169. Christian Yelich batting 218. Like these guys are all struggling. Andrew McCutcheon, our old friend, batting 216 as the designated hitter. Like, their offense has been trouble so far. Not like the Phillies slightly underachieved because we thought they were going to hit 40 home runs a game trouble. Like This is actually a bad offensive team. The Phillies can certainly take advantage, but it's going to be one of those, you're going to have to beat these guys like 3-1 or 4-2 or stuff like that. You're going to have to have strong pitching because you're not going to score much against Corbin Burns or the Brewers' bullpen with Josh Hader waiting back there. You're going to want to get up early, keep the games low scoring, Take care of business in Milwaukee. But listen, the Brewers are a first-place team. They've won 33 games already. The NL Central, not the world's strongest division, but at the same time, they're still leading it. The Phillies are not a division leader, so they're not the better team in this series by record. Can they go out and prove that since Joe Girardi has moved on, or not moved on, since Joe Girardi has been fired, let's say it as, as it is, he got fired because of his performance, do the Phillies have what it takes to prove that they can continue to win past the adrenaline period of just hearing the news that they're going to have a new manager? And what does Rob Thompson do as he manages the bullpen on the road? Keeps the line, Does he keep the lineup the same? We'll keep you updated on that because he's been very consistent, which has been, you've heard my gripe with the team for a while. All of these questions will be answered over the next couple of days as the Phillies take on the Milwaukee Brewers. We'll see game one tomorrow night out there in Milwaukee. But a nice deserved off day. The Phil's second off day in five days, which is wild to me. They had Thursday off, and now they get Monday off. But cool. Keep that rest. Regroup. Get used to your new manager. Maybe a little team bonding. I don't know. They're traveling. So get to know the manager a little bit better, even though Rob Thompson has been the bench coach for this team for a while. He's been with the organization for five years. Just have some chats on that plane right up there to Milwaukee. Crack a couple uh, Milwaukee cold ones. And uh, get everything figured out because this stretch, it could be hugely advantageous for the Phillies if they take advantage. We'll have to wait and see, though. So, well, we had a lot of big news breaking. Friday was the Joe Girardi's Fired Show, and I didn't get a chance to do Off the Pole because of all of the interesting uh, things that we had to break down about Joe Girardi. Off the Pole, of course, is our segment where we ask you a poll question. Get it? Off the Pole. It's a play on words like... When you hit a home run and it hits a foul pole, you, you know what I'm saying. Coming up next, I'll give you our off the pole question. It's going to be a quick one, just one day to respond on Twitter. Get back at us. Let me know what you think so I can respond to it on tomorrow's episode. And I'm going to ask you an interesting question about, well, the big news of the week. Was the Joe Girardi firing right? But it's got a little bit of a twist now that we know that the Phillies have played better without him. I'll explain all of it. On the other side, as we wrap up today's episode of Locked on Phillies. Let me tell you a little bit more about our title sponsor for today, though. Our friends over at BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports info. You can find all the latest sports developments, news, and odds. 
including this year's basketball championship matchup. Boston, Golden State, tied up right now. I got some money on that one, and I definitely did not pick Boston. The NHL Hockey Conference Finals, you've got Edmonton. You've got Colorado. You've got New York. You've got New York. I'm going to remember. It's going to come to me. Tampa Bay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I know baseball a little bit better than I know hockey, of course. And then you've got Major League Baseball. You can get some great odds on the Phillies to make the playoffs right now, courtesy over our friends, uh, our friends over at Bet Online. And of course, you have all the latest fighting news from MMA and UFC to boxing. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. All right, it's time for Off the Poll. Again, it's the segment where I ask a poll question on Twitter, and I'll tell you it now. You can go ahead and check it out on our Twitter account at LO underscore Phillies or my personal account at ConnorThomas975. You can see it right down there on your screen if you're watching on YouTube. And go ahead and check it out, respond, and in the next episode, well, I'll get back to you and I'll give you my thoughts on what you answered as a group, so who votes for like whatever option gets the most votes, and I'll share my thoughts why I agree with you, why I disagree with you, all of that good stuff. I'll break down my thoughts on the poll then. All of that is part of our off the poll segment. Today, our off the poll question, I told you it'd be about Joe Girardi and the firing just before we went into those quick ad reads, but I don't want it to be the typical, are the Phillies better without Joe Girardi? Because, oh, we saw they won three games against the Angels. It'd be impossible for people to be like, like clearly that team was better than anything we've seen. Now, is it directly attributed to Joe Girardi? I don't know. That's another question. But here's what I'm interested in. I need you to project a little bit. By the end of the season, will we say that Rob Thompson is a better manager than Joe Girardi? Now, remember, Joe Girardi, he's got a World Series title to his name. He has won. NL Manager of the Year. He won it down there in Miami. Well, they were the Florida Marlins at the time, back in 2006. He beat the Phillies in a World Series. We saw it up close and personal, unfortunately. And Rob Thompson, he could have a great year. But will it be he, him having a great year? Will it be the team having a great year? Will he do things that you'll look at that will be like, wow, that's great. That's a great managerial move. Or will it just be, well, he's not the other guy, and this team kind of carried themselves, and he just didn't fix anything that wasn't broken. So that's the question. When the season is over, will you consider Rob Thompson to be a better manager? Or when the season is over, do you think Rob Thompson will be a better manager than Joe Girardi? That's how we'll work. So all of that in our off the poll question, I'll put that out on Twitter. You can respond to that. It's going to be a quick one. Because, of course, we had all the news last Friday. Didn't get a chance to do off the poll on Friday and have the whole weekend like we normally do. But go ahead and respond if you get a chance. Appreciate any interaction on that. And I'll give you my thoughts on tomorrow's episode. And speaking of tomorrow's episode, well, that's the next time you'll hear from me. That's all I've got for you today. I want to thank you, as always, for making Locked On Phillies your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Now make your second listen Locked On MLB. Paul Francis Sullivan, Sully, he knows baseball inside and out. He's a baseball encyclopedia. It's available wherever you get your podcast. So check out Locked on MLB. We will all talk to you tomorrow. And I want to thank you as always for rating, reviewing, subscribing. Appreciate all that. Continue to do so, please. And uh, keep the good uh, content coming for yourself. Because as, as the Phillies get hot, Locked on Phillies gets even hotter. We will talk about all of the great stuff going on with the Phillies as they hopefully progress into a hot stretch of the season. And I will talk to you about more of that tomorrow.